He dreams of soaring with the birds in an aircraft built with his own two hands. Twelve other aircrafts he has built before have all failed to take off. He hopes things will be different this time, the 13th time. The engines roar to life and then Upendo is out of his hands and down what passes as a runway. For a few glorious seconds, Upendo is airborne and then it crashes to the ground. <laughs> Another dream dashed. 13 is not a lucky number after all. And when the time came, the homemade plane was towered by a car to gain the required speed to take off, but seems to be more obsessed with the ground than the air, failing to take off. We had our first test flight on 26th of November. We tested the speed of the aircraft and it was okay. But we had some little hitches with the engine. So we are seeking for funds sponsorships from the corporate bodies, government and other institutions who are willing to help to come on board so that they help us develop this aircraft. I've been having dreams of flying ever since I was young, but I have not had the support to fly. The 45-year-old used to watch President Hastings band his chopper as a child, sparking a lifelong passion for helicopters. After years of planning and watching war movies, he decided to build one of his own. My intention is to show to Malawi that Malawians too can do what the whites do. We had some challenges with the wiring system resulting in short circuits, but slowly everything has been sorted out. Felix is eager to take to the skies, but he's been warned against taking a test flight before the Civil Aviation Authority's approval. If his first flight is successful, Felix will be flying into the history books with his homemade helicopter and his sky-high ambitions. Thursday last week, Gabriel Nderito was confident his twin-seater aircraft was ready for trials, a step that would either elevate him to a pioneer in aircraft manufacturing in Kenya or leave him trying. But he encountered the first challenge at his backyard. The plane would not fit into the truck he had hired to transport it to Kangundo for the trials. But Gabriel and his team did not anticipate the mishap that followed. The plane collapsed. But that did not mean the end of the road. The mechanics did their part to restore it. Then the IT specialist turned pilot, who admits has never seen the inside of a cockpit, did his. The second and third day ended without much success. But by Sunday, the team had done everything in their power to get this plane powered by a Toyota NZD engine and a chloride exide battery to make sure it would fly. Even if we are able to make it uh, three feet or four feet, we believe we will have uh, moved a big step. So in a spirited mood, they gave the aircraft the push they thought it needed to gain momentum for takeoff. 
a crowd had formed anxious to see a potentially historic moment. But just when it seemed ready to take the leap, it diverted from the runway and collapsed once again. Gabriel was heartbroken, but surprisingly, his spirit was unbroken. I'll go back to the drawing board and uh, design the loading gear better and uh, also study a little bit more about the loading gear. According to his judgment, the problem lies in the rear wheels. He says it is clear they can't support the weight of the 800 kg plane. In a month's time, Gabriel expects to be back here for a second trial. We've got uh, quite a bit of uh, reserve uh, willpower, and I think uh, the small hiccups are more so nothing to do with the aerodynamics. They are more so to do with small practicalities like sparking plugs, nothing to do with the aerodynamics. When you dream big, you have to start somewhere. For Chris and Samba, the founder of the African Space Research Program, that entails using his back garden to construct Uganda's first jet aircraft, ahead of the planned launch of a satellite into space. Okay, we are supposed to at least have a probe in the lower orbit of the Earth, at least in the next four to five years. There is still a long way to go. The engine for this prototype is yet to be built. Chris and his team are just putting the finishing touches to a shell. And they will have to build a much more robust machine from scratch in order to realize his dreams. But his volunteers appear willing to put their lives in his hands. As we take this project up, I expect to be one of the participating flying pilots for this project. So far, the program has received a modest $80,000 or so in private donations. But its prospects have been boosted by an official pledge of support from Uganda's government, which is donating an undisclosed sum. The president has talked to them on the phone, and uh, based on my report, he has uh, agreed to give them some support. Reaction to the government's backing for the space program from citizens on the streets of the capital, Kampala, has been largely positive. Right now we have the priorities to be invested in money like construction of roads, construction of hospitals, even the healthcare is in a very bad state. It's really a good idea but it needs some time to invest money. Space research to me I think is very important, it's very paramount because first of all it will educate our people. But Chris's ambitions haven't always been viewed favorably and he admits that even now People sometimes think he's mad. When we are done with our work, when we are done with our project, it does the talking on our behalf. So that's not really an issue of being caught crazy. The development of a thick skin leaves Chris confident that he can deal with the many ups and downs that will surely confront him in the years ahead. <laughs>